Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Terry. And we're Escaping, Escaping the Empty Nest. Well, we got back from our trip and it was amazing. <laughs> As most of you know, we planned this trip for three years and I did a ton of research. I'm just a YouTube addict. But there were a few things we picked up along the way, um, especially about Paris, I think. We wanted to share a video about the top eight things that the first time visitor to Paris may not know. So let's go ahead with number one. The first thing that we learned practically on one of the first day or so, then it was one or 24 hours, yeah. <laughs> was that not every place that you go will take a credit card or will accept a credit card. So you do need to carry cash with you at all times. Uh, we found creperies that we wanted to eat at that looked delicious that were recommended on YouTube and we took cash. And just to let you know, there are ATMs around the city. So just double check with your bank before you leave to see about any international fees yeah. you may incur. One of the things you're going to learn about us during this trip is we are suckers for a good view. We will pay a lot of money to get, <laughs> to get a good view. So one of the first things we did right off the bat is we wanted to go to the Arch de Triomphe. And we heard there's not just an arch, it's not just a monument, there's a observation deck from the top of the arch. And wow, the first thing you hit when you do Paris, that should be it. Number one priority, not Sacre Coeur, not the Eiffel Tower, go to the top of the arch. So the Champs Elysees is just like right there. You can look down all the avenues and see the people who are being hilarious running across the street trying to get views <laughs> or but, see the crazy roundabout that surrounds the yes, arch yes <laughs> but i tell you what if you go in the evening at nighttime or close to nighttime oh, the sunset the sunset there is beautiful oh we got so lucky you feel like you could reach out and touch the eiffel tower from there they're just it's just too amazing to yeah. describe you have to see it for yourself i think best view from paris honestly now, some people might say the Eiffel Tower has the best view, but you can't see you the, can't Eiffel see the Eiffel Tower from the Eiffel Tower. Number three, speaking of creperies, the one thing that we did notice, we saw this in YouTube videos, but we really, I guess, didn't pay attention to it, is a lot of Parisians will go to creperies or they'll go to um, boulangeries and they will <laughs> walk and eat it on the go. That is one thing that we did not learn. because. We guess being typical Americans, every time we had food in our hands, we had to be sitting down, yeah. which there aren't as many places that you can actually sit down. We found ourselves sitting on the ground or sitting on curbs, an awful lot eating food. Don't expect there to be benches or you know chairs just anywhere, unless you're near a park. Now, if you can plan it so you're near a park, that's yes, different. That's different. Yeah. Number four. And this is probably the most surprising thing we found in what otherwise was a pretty expensive city is we found really inexpensive ice cold water outside. People were selling bottles of water outside every major tourist attraction. Outside the Louvre, outside Sacre Coeur, outside Notre Dame, which we did go to even though it was closed. We just wanted some pictures. And just about everywhere we went, we could find bottled water for one euro each. And I got to the point, I would walk up to the person because it was hot when we were there. Even though it was May, it was hot. And I'd say, give me five. <laughs> <laughs> and I would drink three and she would drink two. And it was so nice having affordable ice cold water available to us at any point. Number five, <laughs> the Louvre. Everybody wants to see the Louvre to go and see the Mona Lisa, right? Of course. Okay, so here's a few things that we found out about the Louvre. Book your tickets early, like for when it first opens in the morning at nine. We booked our tickets for nine. We arrived there about 8.30 to get in line um, and got in rather quickly. Um, you could go directly to the Denon Wing, which is where the Mona Lisa is. You see the Wing Victory on your way and a lot of other really cool things before you get there. But by that time, the Mona Lisa line is not very long yet. But halfway through our time there, all of a sudden we see a lot of people around Wing Victory and we see a lot oh, of people in the line for Mona Lisa. It was noisy we too. Yeah, yeah it We was, were it was... very glad to get there early and to be able to see the things that we wanted to see early yeah. with not that many people around. And speaking of the Louvre, one thing I want to say is we went there with typical tourists where we had, you know, eight to ten things marked off a checklist that we wanted to see. Mm -hmm. But... We'd seen the Mona Lisa a thousand times in our life, not in person, but on we knew YouTube. we knew ex on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we knew exactly what it was going to be. We knew exactly what Wing Victory was going to look like. We knew exactly what um, Venus de Milo, Venus de Milo. and all these all these things that were on our checklist. And when we saw them, it was like, yep, 
That's it. That's the Venus de Milo. When you finally get to see the view you traveled across the country to see. <sighs> okay. Yes, go in with your map, go in with your list of things you want to see, but don't bury your head in that map on the way there. Most of the things that surprised us, most of the things that impressed us, honestly, were not the things on our checklist. It was being able to walk into the uh, the uh, covered courtyards with the glass ceilings, used to be open air, and seeing these gardens of statues that we didn't even know would be there. So impressive. You're going to find something there that really impresses you that has nothing to do with the typical tourist top 10 list. Number six. One of the things that honestly holds will, will hold a long-term memory for me was walking around one of the non-touristy parts of Paris. Now, you wouldn't think that this part would be non-touristy because it's literally so close to Notre Dame. But there's an island, a smaller island next to the, the Notre Dame island is called Lille Saint Louis. And it's a residential island. There's it's hardly anything touristy there. But walking around and, and, and getting a feeling of Paris like a, a residence would see, a resident, um, you're not seeing the crowds, you're just seeing the atmosphere. We went to a really nice ice cream shop there, was it a, a Marino? A, a Marino ice cream. And uh, they make a nice little flower ice cream that's really cool, and kind of their mm -hmm. signature dish. Yeah. And you'll see all those, all those all over Paris. But we just sat down on the, on the stool at Marino and just had a really nice quiet time, and it was so much fun. And uh, yeah, so get away from the tourist areas, and that's a place that's convenient to get to, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel touristy at all. So mm -hmm. check check out the Lille Saint Louis, and next time you're in Paris. Number seven. Seven. <laughs> the Palais Garnier. This was something that, as watching YouTube videos, we did not see very much mention about no, it. Nothing. And being musicians, the two of us, we love opera, we love musicals, and especially Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera took the Palais Garnier idea and incorporated it into some of the major scenes from it. So we decided to take the personal tour. We didn't take a guided tour. We just wanted to kind of walk around on our own, not be on timetable. <laughs> but as we climbed the steps and actually saw the grand staircase in there, the two of us looked at each other and went, <laughs> masquerade. Masquerade. And so uh, it, it was just so beautiful. It was and stunning. There, there, there's an area that I'm sure is for like the patrons before the operas would start that they could sit and gather around and, and just walk foyer. around the grand foyer. The grand yeah. foyer, wow, the yeah. The grand foyer was so beautiful. It's probably the most beautiful thing that I think we saw in Paris. Yeah. Because yeah. Definitely it was in Paris, so yeah. opulent. It was just, it was just, you just can't stop staring at everything around it. Even up on the yeah. ceilings, there's two fireplaces at either end of it. It was just so beautiful. And then walking up the staircases and taking a pier, they had a few of the doors open so that you could actually go inside one of the balconies and look out on the stage, this big stage area. Yeah. Biggest stage production. in Europe. Yes, yeah. definitely. And and just to see just the opulence inside there, red velvet looking chairs for the patrons <laughs> to sit in and the balconies were beautiful. It, for me, being a musician and, and like I said, loving the kind of music that we do, that that was one of the really yeah. big highlights for me. So she didn't even mention the famous chandelier. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You yeah, may, you may mention it. Yeah, well, the, the chandelier was amazing. I don't even know how many tons it weighs. I looked it up at one point, several tons, and it was just it's as it's as grand as you would expect it to be, considering its fame. Number eight. <laughs> Speaking of the opera, right around the corner from the opera is Gallery Lafayette, and we thought from seeing pictures of it it was a mall it's not a mall it's one incredible breathtaking very expensive store absolutely amazing now even if you're not into high-end shopping and lord knows we're not <laughs> it's still worth seeing being under the dome uh that glass dome is just incredible uh but one thing is really cool even if you don't spend a penny you can go in go all the way to the top they have a rooftop terrace that overlooks the city now we're not going to say it's as good a view as the arch mm -hmm. it's not but it's still worth doing because it's free mm -hmm. and it's very convenient um it's right just in the heart of paris if you decide to go the elevator goes all the way to the next to highest level and then you have to take the escalator the rest of the way 
or you can take like you know all the escalators all the way to the top but for the fact that they have 20,000 euro sunglasses there for them to also have a terrace that's absolutely free, free to get into it's really cool and really impressive well there you go eight quick tips for you that we hope was very helpful to you in navigating the city of Paris. Speaking of navigating issues, we have a video that's upcoming that will talk about that if, if you're a heavier um, person or if you do have mobility issues where you need a wheelchair or cane or crutches. We have some tips that we learned while we were there. Paris can be, be challenging. It can yeah. be a challenging city to get around if you have mobility issues. So if you'd like to be notified about that video or other future videos, make sure that you like, subscribe, and ring the bell and you will get notified when that video comes out and any of our other European travels. We really enjoy helping first-time visitors. Uh, we were all first-time visitors at one point and we know what that's like and we know it can be tricky sometimes navigating a city for the first time. So we appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching and bye for now. now.